Hello, and welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. I'm John. We, uh, you know, kicked Alan to the curb. He was back for one week, but now, you know, this is the gold, I think. If a YouTube commenter has, <laughs> you know, shown anything, they like the John and Brandy combination. <laughs> is that what they like? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today um, we're doing top five animal movies, which I think we both might have a slightly different uh, definition of. Yeah, you know, when I think of animal films, it might tend to go in the nature gone amuck horror category, mm -hmm. but uh, that's just because those are the animals I like. Animals eating people. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, mine's going to be more family films. So. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to start? Sure, I'll start. All right. My, my number five is probably my cheesiest pick. Um, it's just like a guilty pleasure movie for me. It is from the year 2000, and that is My Dog Skip. <laughs> which stars a young Frankie Muniz and is like a totally cheesy period piece set in the 40s. And Luke Wilson is his neighbor who's going to go off to war. And he's a little kid who doesn't have any friends, but then he gets a dog. And his his parents are played by Diane Lane and Kevin Bacon. And it's just one of those movies with a really sort of cheesy setting but mm. and script but <laughs> there's so many good actors in it and it's all so earnest that you just kind of can't help sort of wins but you have over, a great yeah. time watching it yeah <laughs> and the dog is totally cute and does all kinds of like crazy tricks and everything and it's very very heartwarming it's just like if you have kids who love animals and you want to watch something that's not totally annoying that you'll like too, <laughs> this is a great one for that. Okay. I skipped that movie. Maybe I'll give it a chance someday. Probably it's not cute. until I have kids. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> cute. Um, my number five also continues the dog theme, and that is 2000's Best in Show. We haven't gotten into the horror movies yet. Um, and I think one thing that's interesting, there are honestly so many people that will watch a movie just because there's a cute dog on the cover. I've met these people, and they freak me out. They're like, oh, did you see that Richard Gere movie? I was like, what, the one that was like made for TV? Yeah, I saw it in the video store. It's got this cute dog, and I rented it. It <laughs> warmed my heart. It was so good. But anyway, that's another talk. But a lot of dog movies out there for you dog lovers. But Best in Show, I think, is hilarious. It's my favorite um, Christopher Guest mockumentary. Mm -hmm. And that includes even Spinal Tap, which he acted in. I love Best in Show. I think it's so funny. Um, I don't know. There's just so many great things about it. It's, there's a lot of animals in it. Yeah, too. there's a lot of dogs. If you love dogs, they'll all be represented. And it's, you know, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara are hilarious. Um, it says something when the DVD has 30 minutes of deleted scenes that the deleted scenes are as funny or funnier than some of the stuff in the movie. Like, they just shot the crap out of that. I love this whole mockumentary style they have going in the Christopher Guest movies, but I think this one's the best. Cool. Uh, okay, my number four... This sounds like it's another cheesy totally pick. I will defend this movie <laughs> as being super well made and just really well acted and very impressive. It's from 1996 and that is Fly Away Home starring <laughs> Jeff Daniels. His daughter is Anna Paquin. The they only... teach the geese how to fly and they take them to take them south for the winter and it is totally cheesy but if you watch it again like with the eye towards cinematography, this movie is gorgeous absolutely freaking gorgeous <laughs> i think i had a lower tolerance for cheesy movies when i was younger because I, I, i've never seen fly away home the one thing that kind of freaks me out about it is of course a few years later in squid and the whale those two actors played lovers and then you see a movie where their father and daughter think about that. <laughs> that's well, kind of like up. 13 in this one it's not really like a few years later it's like 10 years later um Okay, well, you just ruined Matt, Yeah, exactly. Right, so. <laughs> you can never Thanks. watch that film again. My job is done. That's like one of those ones where when it comes on cable, I'm like, oh, cute, Fly Away Home is on. And now I'm going to be like, ugh. <laughs> the next time you see a little uh, baby goose walking on, across Anna the street, Patrick. you're going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, from my done. point of view, I have to say, please don't. <laughs> um, so my number four, I'm going to go with a tie. Ben cheated in our uh, top five horror directors and did a tie, so I'm going to do the same thing. Ooh. Um, from 1990, Arachnophobia. That's one of the movies. <laughs> and the other one is from 1977, Kingdom of the Spiders. They're both horrifying movies about killer arachnids, and they're both really good, I think. More people need to see them. They're both really this underrated. This is cheating in a few different ways. <laughs> Why? I don't think that, that spiders are animals. Insects are animals. <laughs> An animal is this big, giant term. Uh, I guess. It's like saying you could put anything on here because, like, people are animals. <laughs> like... Why didn't she that bad? I, you know, it, the spiders fit into the nature gone amok. I, I think it works. You can let us know what you think at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Okay. But I think these are very scary movies. Spiders, you know, scare the hell out of me. And they're just fun. 
Uh, William Shatner covered in Tarantulas and Kingdom of the Spiders. Jeff Daniels covered in them in Arachnophobia. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. Well, Jeff Daniels. <laughs> All right. Not um, so much for the chat. <laughs> <laughs> My number three follows the theme of sort of like a kid and their animal that I have going on, but Bullshit. it's not um, it's not cheesy or heartwarming at all. It's it's kind of a, a tragic film, and that is 1969's Kess, which is um, hmm. a British film about a working class a uh, young boy who's just tormented at home by his older brother, tormented at school by everyone, and sort of uh, finds this outlet when he tries to train a kestrel to... Like, he, he steals a book about falcons from a secondhand bookstore and tries to teach this bird how to do, do something. Hmm. Um, it's actually, like, a super well-regarded film. It is um, on the British Film Institute's top 100 films, the way that AFI did top 100. Oh, okay. AFI did top 100. It's number seven. Wow. Um, I know it just recently came out on Criterion, so it did, it's very it high It did regarded. come out on Criterion, and um, it's it's kind of a hard movie to watch, and um, it's it's not sentimental at all, but a uh, imp very impressive performance from the kid. Um, the actor's name is David Bradley, and yeah, it's just it's a good movie. Hmm. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Uh, moving in a totally different direction. My number three is from 2003, and it is the remake of Willard. Are rats not animals? Are you can tell me that now. <laughs> <laughs> the remake of Willard. <laughs> yeah. No. Honestly, I'm not a fan of remakes. I hate that every horror movie we see nowadays is a remake. But out of the whole lot we've seen in the last ten years, Willard is the best remake. I think. I loved it. I liked it better than the original. I think Crispin Glover gives an awesome performance. One of his best. I mean, have you even seen this? movie no uh, i don't remember <laughs> probably i mean i remember crispin glover being creepy with some rats yeah and it's good <laughs> and then you know he gets pissed off and they rip the Is crap there out of things else to remember from the movie? no it's honestly it's a really i think it's a good weird drama about like this antisocial character and it has the added bonus of killer rats like i think <laughs> <laughs> it could have just been this nice dark drama but it's still a horror film at heart it's uh, directed by and written by glenn morgan who his producing partner james wong they worked on a lot of the best episode of the X-Files and they created the Final Destination series as producers and Wong directed the first one. So I think Willard's pretty underrated. It totally bombed when it came yeah, out, but I love it. As killer rap movies go, that's this, the seminal one for you? Yeah. Okay. And there are some good ones. There are others. Okay. Well, speaking of movies that are the seminal entry in their genre, um, there are a lot of horse movies out there. A lot of horse racing movies. You know, everything from National Velvet to Racing Stripes. That's about a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> but it races, and it sort of looks like a horse. But this film <laughs> is, in my opinion, the best one ever, and that is 1979's The Black Stallion. This film is gorgeous and is from the same director as Fly Away Home, Carol Ballard. It and is the same writer as absolute, E.T. Yes, Melissa Matheson wrote the screenplay. Uh, co-wrote the screenplay. I forget who she wrote it with. Um, someone unimportant. Someone unimportant. <laughs> um, absolutely gorgeous to look at. Another great kid performance. Um, it just... If you don't like this movie, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like you, you <laughs> well, luckily I can say of coal. If you do not like the Black Stallion, <laughs> I, I've never seen the Black Stallion. The uh, lay motif of your list seems to be movies I've never seen. The Black Stallion's one. I have no excuse for not having oh, seen it. I need to watch you've it. You've got to watch it. Yeah. It is so. It's just so good, and it it really has some incredible cinematography when mm. the horse and the boy are on the island at the beginning when they're shipwrecked. It is just hmm. insanely beautiful. So. <laughs> Moving on to my number two. This is definitely going to be the biggest cheat of my list, even more so than The Spiders. 1993's Jurassic Park. Because I, I can't think of any other animal people would more like to see in person, except for a silverback gorilla, than a dinosaur. <laughs> okay. You could see a silverback gorilla. You know? But that's what's so good about Jurassic Park. This is the closest we'll ever get to this wonderful animal that is the dinosaur, the T-Rex, the Velociraptor, the Dilophosaurus, even though they made up the stuff about it spitting. Still amazing. I think it's one of my favorite movies of all time and it's totally a cheat but dinosaurs are reptiles reptiles are animals so bam take that wow <laughs> I just love that all of mine were like about like an animal that actually gives a performance and all of yours are just special <laughs> <laughs> anyway to be fair i really felt that the spiders and arachnophobia committed to it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well my number one when we, when we picked this topic it was just completely obvious that this would be number one i had to kind of it think wasn't about jurassic the other park? ones it wasn't jurassic park is uh is babe from 1995 <laughs> 
Um, From this... the director of Mad Max? Or wait, was that Pig in the City? That was Pig in the City. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Even weirder. This this is just a wonderful movie. Like it, it really is. It's one of my favorites of all time. Um, it, and it, it's so adorable, but um, really moving. At the yeah, same I know time. it's held in high regard. Wasn't it nominated for best it picture? Nom- the it year was it came nominated out? for yeah. best picture. Yeah, and uh, you know one of those rare ch- uh, children's films that's been nominated for best picture. But mm-hmm. uh, and it's got a whole plethora of farm animals not just one <laughs> animal like all my other ones it's got plenty of cute ones and it's my only talking animal film on here so. <laughs> no hot to trot with bobcat goldthwaite for you um no keeping in you know my you know <laughs> looking at your list i have not seen babe you know i have to throw that You've out never there too seen babe I was 10 years old when it came out, and it looked lame. I wanted to see monster movies when I was 10 years old. I didn't want to see little animal movies. That's, that's weird that you've never seen Babe. That is weird. Spencer agrees. That's bizarre. Well, it's on the list. Unfortunately, there are much cooler looking movies with werewolves also babe on the list. Babe is cool. But... Watch Babe. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Before Brandy kills me, let's get to my number one, which I'm sure she'll kill me over, and that is Jaws. It's a shark eating people. Um, you know, I still think to this day it's Steven Spielberg's best movie. Jurassic Park's right underneath it. <laughs> but uh, have you ever had a pet? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a cat and a dog. <laughs> okay, did you hate them? <laughs> I didn't hate them. They just didn't do a lot for me. <laughs> okay. I prefer Jurassic Park and Jaws. <laughs> okay. But uh, you know. Underwater monster flicks are some of my favorite things. Jaws inspired, you know, piranha movies, giant squid movies, killer octopus movies, all sorts of great monsters. And it's still one of the scariest movies of all time. And if you think I'm cheating, like with Jurassic Park, it was all special effects. There is real footage of a shark. Just throwing that out there. It's Mm -hmm. intercut with the animatronic. It's practically a documentary. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad we can see eye to eye, Brandy. So you can let us know what you thought of this episode at MacGuffinPodcast.com. What is an animal? What isn't an animal? (laughs) Does anyone care about Babe? You know, those kind of questions can be answered. How hot do we look? There's all (laughs) sorts of things that you can let us know at our various YouTube, Facebook, Twitter accounts. And we look forward to hearing from you. John especially really wants you to tell him that he looks hot. So. <laughs> especially, I'd look, I'd look hot draped with the, uh, you know, what the... Oh, I don't have any good animals. I, say, I can't say, like, the fur of a dog, because then it's just like horrible. Like a python, if you had, like, a snake or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Tell me what animals I would look hot covered <laughs> in. Need to cut and this McGuffin, off. yeah. Need to cut. All right. <laughs> Thank you for watching.